serves Texas. The biggest and one of the most industrious and spectacularly developing states in America. In recent years, Texas has come to be accepted practically as the universal gauge of the ultimate of everything. Oil, production and reserves to stagger the imagination. Refining with huge new plants ever under construction. Manufacturing in variety and ever increasing volume. Texas tradition of the biggest and the best is this, the Houston City Hospital. Modern, perfectly equipped. Structurally reminiscent of the Washington Monument in the nation's capital is Houston's San Jacinto Monument. Probably no hostelry has become so famous in such a brief period as Houston's fabulous Shamrock Hotel. It is not the largest in the world, but it ranks among the very finest and is perhaps the best equipped, most functional hotel in the United States. Typical of its superb equipment is this enormous swimming pool. Houston is alive with trade and industry, business activity which is destined to continued expansion in this territory of tremendous growth and prosperity. The Houston Ship Canal, a portion of the waterway which links Houston, marine-wise, to the great oceans of the world. Today, Houston is one of the leading ports of the southern United States. The battleship Texas purchased from the government and placed here as a permanent memorial to the proud name it carried through its years of patriotic duties on the seven seas. Now let's leave the city of Houston for some of the less urban parts of Texas. Wherever you turn, industry abounds. For example, lumbering. Many people do not realize that Texas can claim vast stands of timber, stands which are being cut and replanted under conservation planning providing pulp for the manufacture of paper and materials for expansive building projects. Some 40 miles southeast of Houston lies Galveston. Famous both as a business center and as one of the finest resorts of the great Southwest, Galveston combines business with unfailing charm for the vacationer. A great portion of Galveston's prosperity is derived from the year-round flow of tourists. Galveston's hotels are modern and beautiful, surrounded with an aura of traditional Texas hospitality. An important contributor to the wealth of the state of Texas is the chemical industry. Nearby, at Texas City, is located one of the world's largest chemical operations. Plant and capacity are continually being expanded. From here, enormous quantities of chemicals and chemical byproducts are shipped to the far corners of the nation and the world. Sulfur being loaded for many ports and purposes, delivered to the docks by Santa Fe. Cotton, too, from the fields of Texas, delivered to the docks by rail. Grain, millions of bushels, shipped from the port of Galveston to feed the peoples of the world. Sports fishing in the warm Gulf waters is a pastime to thrill any fishing enthusiast. And where else but in Texas could you catch a fish that size from the end of a pier? As this beauty is brought in, we see that in any ordinary fishing locale, to catch them this size would require a half day's journey and a well-equipped fishing boat. But there you are, landed and safe. And the fisherman shares the pride in his catch with two charming admirers. Galveston's beach hotels are plentiful and excellent, geared to the modest purse or the most extravagant taste. Galveston's wide white beaches play an important part in drawing vacationers to this pleasant resort. Not far from the heart of the city is Stewart Beach, well equipped and fully up to Texas standards in sun, surf, and the smiles of Texas beauty. Clean, inviting sands caressed by blue waters offer an invitation almost impossible to resist. Certainly these folks seem to find it fun. These fine beaches are but one of the many features that makes life in Galveston desirable as a place to live and work. What does Waikiki have that Galveston doesn't have? Well, maybe Diamond Head and a few palm trees, but when it comes to ukuleles, Texas has them too. 
In recent years, the lower Rio Grande Valley has become known as one of the most fruitful and productive of the world's agricultural areas. Here in this magic valley of year-round summer and scientific cultivation, it is not uncommon to produce four full crops per year. Citrus fruit grows in abundance, and the crops are universally accepted as among the finest in the world. If there is a farming paradise, it must be here. Texas grapefruit comes complete with built-in technicolor. Not only a delight to the eye, but so naturally sweet that sugar is superfluous. And here it goes into a freight train, on its way to epicures of all America. Close to the southeastern border of Texas is the city of Beaumont, a town that grew with dignity into this fine, solid community. Just beyond Beaumont is this obelisk honoring Spindletop, the first producing oil well drilled in the state. Here on January 10th, 1901, black gold gushed from the reserves of Texas, the beginning of a tremendous oil empire. The history of Texas oil is too well known to need repeating, but the forests of derricks and billions of barrels of oil, the bright fires of industry, the transportation moving throughout the world, all combined to form a never-ending tribute to the glory of Spindletop. In the minds and hearts of most Texans, this building is almost tantamount to the White House. This is the capital of Texas. Its location, Austin, where the governing bodies work untiringly for the greater glory of Texas. The capital is not the only source of Austin pride. The city itself is a shining credit to Texas as every aspect of it testifies, structurally, commercially, and culturally. Here, too, is the University of Texas, one of the outstanding educational institutions of the nation. This tower, symbol of all that Texas University means in the hearts of its thousands of graduates throughout the world, stands in valiant tribute to Texas University. One of Texas' most picturesque and oldest cities is San Antonio. San Antonio is pervaded by somewhat contradictory elements. On the one hand, an aggressive urge toward development which characterizes the entire state. On the other, languorous, luxury-loving elegance of the days of the dawn. This latter expressed most notably in San Antonio's warm-hearted hospitality and friendliness. This is the site of the heroic Battle of the Alamo, which will stand forever as a tribute to those who fought in proud sacrifice to the honor of their state. Waco, Texas is proud of its Baylor University, proud too of many other things. Its flourishing enterprise, which permits its citizens to enjoy such pleasant things as fine golf courses. Complete with this handy gadget for getting from green to green without the usual wear and tear on the golfer's feet. Proud too of its 4-H club, earnest youth training for the realm of agriculture. Texas and the world must be fed and this great district has achieved an enviable position through catering to that need. Here the soil is rich, and the grower may plant any one of varied crops with assurance of a rich yield. Lucky farmer is he who lives and works and prospers in the Waco territory. Another distinguished Texas city is Temple. The Santa Fe Employees Association Hospital creates a warm and permanent bond between a great railroad and a great community. This hospital works in close association with another outstanding medical institution here, the Scott White Clinic. If you should happen to live here, you probably refer affectionately to this great city as Big D. That's right, Dallas. Let's look Dallas over for a moment. Doesn't this give you the feeling that you're in a truly great city? Well, this impressive facade more than lives up to its promise. For Dallas is indeed a great city. A city of established prosperity and beckoning opportunity. Did you know that Dallas is the nation's number one spot cotton market? That it's the fourth insurance city? Yes, Dallas lives up to its promise. Second in America in manufacture of wash dresses third in manufacture of millinery, fashion arbiter of the Southwest, 
commercial and industrial Gibraltar. Distribution center for automobiles and agricultural equipment. As a transportation center. And as we all know, Dallas is a dominant factor in the aviation industry. Here is a portion of the huge chance bought aircraft plant on the outskirts of the city. This entire plant and most of its personnel were moved intact from New England to re-establish here in this area of agreeable climate and within the limits of an adequate pool of skilled labor. Dallas's wide and beautiful boulevards lead to one of the finest universities in America, Southern Methodist. The campus and buildings of SMU rank with those of the finest educational institutions in the country. In keeping with the superb physical equipment, its scholastic standards and its traditions are commensurate with the proportions of the state itself. Naturally, being in Texas, students here are healthy, handsome, and rugged. And of course, it's co-eds among the most beautiful in the country. In sports, Dallas has much to offer. Certainly, it isn't necessary to remind football fans that the annual Cotton Bowl game is one of the great sports classics of the year. This is one game that can always be counted on for thrills from the moment of the kickoff until the final whistle has blown. And through it all, the crowd, though definitely partisan, plays the role of the sportsman to the visiting team. Yes, this is indeed a superb gridiron classic. Indeed, a big day for Dallas and the entire Southwest. One of the biggest fairgrounds installations in the world is the $15 million permanent exposition plant in Dallas Fair Park, scene of the annual Texas State Fair, where business, agriculture, science, and amusement combine for the entertainment and edification of tens of thousands of spectators each year. There's fun for old and young, sideshows, rides, the whole dazzling, delightful work. To Texans, one serious but fascinating aspect is the showing of prized stock, beautiful horses, carefully bred cattle. The cattle capital of Texas is Fort Worth, friendly rival of Dallas, only 30 miles distant. Over 80% of all the cattle sold commercially in Texas moves through the Fort Worth market. During the past five years, this represented over one and a half million head of cattle and calves per year, with an annual dollar value of more than $150 million. But Fort Worth is far from being only a cattle center. It is a handsome, modern metropolis, an outstanding wholesale center for much of the western part of the state. It is one of the largest flour and milling centers of the southwest, handling over half of the wheat crop of Texas, as well as large shipments from nearby states. During the past decade, Fort Worth has taken its place as one of the leading aviation centers of the country. The consolidated Vultee plant, which has contributed mightily to the recent rapid development of Fort Worth, is one of the most important aircraft manufacturing operations in the nation. Here are built commercial and military aircraft of many types and designs, contributing to an important degree to this nation's prominence in the world of aviation, as well as to the strength of the nation's armed might. For all this, Fort Worth is proud, for it is all a part of the pattern of the overall picture of the continuing development of this great section, with the railroad working hand in hand in every phase of progress and future. Culturally, too, Fort Worth may well be proud. Here is Texas Christian University, one of the several great similar institutions in the state. TCU numbers among its steadily expanding enrollment students from all parts of Texas, the nation, and the world. As these students graduate, each one becomes a goodwill ambassador, reflecting favor on the state of Texas. 
Not far from Fort Worth lies Cleburne. Here, more than 1,300 employees are engaged in maintaining Santa Fe equipment in the locomotive shops, car shops, storage areas, and other branches of activity serving the Gulf Line territory. In agriculture, Texas marches vigorously. Dams dot the landscape. Power plants have been erected to meet the electrical needs. Irrigation installations have increased fertility of vast reaches of land, giving water the plasma of agriculture in quantities to fill every need. Modern farming methods play effective roles in any expanding agricultural development. Here, alfalfa grows in profusion, harvested by machinery that makes possible the utilization of tremendous acreage and a greater return per acre. The Texas farmer is aided by the constant research of railroads and other interested industries. Lettuce is produced in great quantity by the most profitable, up-to-date methods. Here, a conveyor belt loads the freshly cut head. Then, on to waiting refrigerator cars for transit to distant markets. Although Texas is one of the nation's greatest beef-producing states, it also ranks fourth in number of dairy cattle. Texas is particularly famous for its fine Jersey, being the leading Jersey state in the country. Hay is a high profit crop for Texas farmers. And of course, one of the dominant crops in the state is cotton. Moving majestically through white fields, giant picking machines, their size and might indicative of the scientific methods to which Texas and America may ascribe their monumental agricultural expansion. The productivity of the cotton fields of Texas can have no more graphic illustration than this vast storage area of baled cotton awaiting shipment to the nation's mills and to the far corners of the globe. Here they are loaded into boxcars, for cotton, like everything else in America, is dependent on that tried and true arm of American productivity, the railroad. But while we are on the subject, let's not forget that of all Texas resources, oil is still king. The state is dotted with drilling rigs, probing for new reservoirs, or pumping wells which draw out the millions of barrels of crude oil which contributes so importantly to the industry of the nation and to the prosperity and growth of Texas. Throughout the Texas Panhandle area, from long proven consistent producing fields and from newly discovered fields, are drawn some 90 million barrels of oil a year. And a large part of this oil is refined in the territory. The Santa Fe service area is particularly rich in proven fields and in reserves. And almost anywhere you look, you will see tremendous refining operations which convert the black gold into states of practical use, then to be shipped by tank cars to the far reaches of the country, as well as to ocean ports for transshipment overseas. Along with oil comes natural gas. Through high-pressure transmission lines, billions of cubic feet of natural gas are supplied to consumers throughout the country from the large gas reservoirs in this part of Texas. This is Borger, one of the most rapidly developing cities of the Texas Panhandle, center of huge oil refining operations. An important adjunct of natural gas and crude oil is the manufacture of carbon black. By far, the largest percentage of all carbon black produced in the country comes from the area around Borger. Additional chemical, synthetic rubber, and other similar plants are being located throughout the region. Throughout the state of Texas, a familiar site and working partner in the continuing growth and progress of the state is the transportation provided by Santa Fe. Here pulling into the station at Amarillo, brisk and hospitable city of 75,000. Though not quite so large as some of its sister Texas cities, Amarillo is equally modern and progressive. The Amarillo area is particularly rich in grain sorghums and wheat. These grains
grains and their byproducts, like many other products of the Texas yield, depend on adequate and effective transportation to carry them to destination. South of Amarillo and in Lubbock County, cotton is the dominant crop, the city of Lubbock being the country's third largest inland cotton market. This is the city of Lubbock, aggressive, attractive, one of the most vital of all Texas cities. Here is a city that has increased its population several times during the past 25 years, and the end is not in sight. It can also boast of having one of the finest institutions of higher learning in this or any state, Texas Tech. Although a relatively young school, Texas Tech has already earned for itself a high position of scholastic and athletic prowess. We now come to the San Angelo area of West Texas, hub of one of the most richly productive areas of the state. In addition to being a major cattle raising area, San Angelo is the commercial center of an important sheep raising industry. These are some of the finest wool producers in the nation. And when they get their periodic haircuts, they are contributing importantly to the nation's wool requirements. And then it's run, sheep, run. San Angelo is also noted as an Angora goat raising center. Texas Angora goats being the source of almost 90% of the fine wool used in the American manufacture of mohair. Mr. Goat sheds his coat to the mechanical shears, and soon the wool will be on its way to markets and manufacturers. We now jump to the far southwestern corner of this tremendous state of Texas, to the Rio Grande River at El Paso, the international boundary between the United States and its good neighbor to the south, Mexico. Want to take a trip abroad? Cross the International Bridge without passport, and in about 60 seconds, you may enjoy the charm of old Mexico in Juarez. El Paso, strictly modern, is typically American, with noticeable overtone of languid Latin warmth and charm. Modern transportation facilities play an important role in the continuing population and industrial development of this thriving city by the border. We have shown you a part, but only a small part, of the fabulous, wondrous empire that is Texas. Sprawling, proud, possessed of fabulous wealth in oil and other natural resources. In cattle by the thousands upon thousands of heads. In agriculture, in variety and quantity to stagger the imagination. In commerce and in manufacturing and all the myriad interconnecting facets of 20th century progress and prosperity. Santa Fe has long served and contributed in fair measure to the unqualified greatness of this part of the nation and takes justifiable pride in assuming a like responsibility in the future growth and prosperity of this ever developing, ever amazing state that is destined to even greater stature in this nation of freedom of enterprise and unbounded opportunity.